Hello, third graders. I'm so happy to be here reading you a story, our last story of the year. Ramona Quimby, age eight, by Beverly Cleary. Ramona Quimby, chapter one, the first day of school. Now, what I would like you to do is you get to fill in all of the quotations. So when we get to this spot right here where it says, ha ha, I get to ride the bus to school all by myself. And, and then I'll read Ramona Bragg to her big sister Beatrice at breakfast. But every time those, I will leave that open for it to be your turn. Okay, so starting at the beginning. Chapter one, the first day of school. Ramona Quimby hoped her parents would forget to give her a little talking to. She did not want anything to spoil this exciting day. Ramona bragged to her big sister Beatrice at breakfast. Her stomach felt quivery with excitement at the day ahead, a day that would begin with a bus ride just the right length to make her feel a long way from home, but not long enough, she hoped, to make her feel carsick. Ramona was going to ride the bus because changes had to be made in the schools in the Quimby's part of the city during the summer. Glenwood, the girls' old school, had become an intermediate school, which meant Ramona had to go to Cedarhurst Primary School. Beezus was too excited to be annoyed with her little sister. Corrected Ramona, who was not going to let her little sister get away with acting older than she. Acting older than she really was. Ramona had reached the age of demanding accuracy from everyone, even herself. All summer, whenever a grown-up asked what grade she was in, she felt as if she was fibbing when she answered, because she had not actually started the third grade. Still, she could not say she was in the second grade, since she had finished that grade last June. Grown-ups did not understand that summers were free from grades said Mr. Quimby, as he carried his breakfast dishes into the kitchen. Yesterday had been his last day working at the checkout counter of the ShopRite Market. Today he was returning to college to become what he called a real live school teacher. He was also going to work one day a week in the frozen food warehouse of the chain of ShopRite Markets to help the family squeak by as the grown-ups put it, until he finished his schooling. Said Mrs. Quimby, as she swished suds in the dishpan. She stood back from the sink so she would not spatter the white uniform she wore in the doctor's office where she worked as a receptionist. Ramona wiped off her milk mustache and gathered up her dishes. Mr. Quimby flicked a dish towel at Ramona as she passed him. She giggled and dodged, happy, because he was happy. Never again would he stand all day at a cash register, ringing up groceries for a long line of people who were always in a hurry. Ramona slid her plate into the dishwater. Mrs. Quimby laughed. Beezus was last to bring her dishes into the kitchen. She asked. Ramona had been wondering the same thing. Her father knew how to read and do arithmetic. He also knew about Oregon pioneers and about two pints making one quart. Mr. Quimby wiped a plate and stacked it in the cupboard. I'm taking an... Oh, oops, your turn. Ramona interrupted, answered her father. Why does anyone have to go to school to study a thing like that? Rem uh, wondered Ramona. All her life she had been told that the way to grow was to eat good food, usually food she did not like, and get plenty of sleep, usually when she had more interesting things to do than go to bed. 
Mrs. Quimby hung up the dishcloth, scooped up Picky Picky, the Quimby's' old cat, old yellow cat, and dropped him at the top of the basement steps. She said, After the family's rush to brush teeth, Mr. Quimby said to his daughters, and into each waiting pair he dropped a new pink eraser. He said, said the girls. Even a small present was appreciated, because presents of any kind had been scarce while the family tried to save money, so Mr. Quimby could return to school. Ramona, who liked to draw as much as her father, especially treasured the new eraser. Smooth, pearly pink, smelling softly of rubber, and just right for erasing pencil lines. <sighs> Mrs. Quimby handed each member of her family a lunch, two in paper bags and one in a lunchbox for Ramona. She began. Ramona sighed. Here it was, the little stocking to she always dreamed, dreaded, always dreaded. <laughs> Said her mother. Ramona made a face. Being nice to Willa Jean was part of Ramona's life that was not changing, the part she wished that would change. Every day after school, she had to go to her friend Howie Kemp's house, where her parents paid Howie's grandmother to look after her until one of them could come for her. Both of Howie's parents, too, went off to work each day. She liked Howie, but after spending most of the summer, except for swimming lessons in the park at the Kemp's house, she was tired of having to play with four-year-old Willa Jean. She was also tired of apple juice and graham crackers for a snack every single day, complained Ramona. Like the time Willa Jean wore her flippers when she ran under the sprinkler, pretending she was the mermaid on the tuna fish can, and then left big wet footprints on the kitchen floor. Mrs. Kemp said I should have stopped her because Willa Jean didn't know any better. Mrs. Quimby gave Ramona a quick hug. When Ramona sighed, her father hugged her and said, Then he began to sing. I know that song. We've got high hopes, we've got try hopes, by cherry pie in July hopes. <laughs> well, sort of something like that. Anyway, Ramona enjoyed her father's making up new words for the song, but the little old aunt moving along the rubber tree plant, and she liked being big enough to be counted on, but sometimes when she went to the Kemp's, she felt as if everything depended on her. If Howie's grandmother did not look after her, her mother could not work full time. If her mother did not work full time, her father could not go to school. If her father did not go to school, he might have to go back to being a checker, the work that made him tired and cross. Still, Ramona had too many interesting things to think about to let a responsibility worry her as she walked through the autumn sunshine toward her school bus stop. Her new eraser in hand, new sandals on her feet, that quivery feeling of excitement in her stomach, and the song about high hopes running through her head. She thought about her father's new part-time job zipping around in a warehouse on a forklift truck, filling orders for orange juice, peas, fish sticks, and all the other frozen items the markets carried. He called himself Santa's little helper because the temperature of the warehouse was way below zero, and he would have to wear heavy padded clothing to keep him from freezing. The job sounded like fun to Ramona, she wondered how she was going to feel about her father's teaching art to other people's children and decided not to think about that for a while. Instead, Ramona thought about Beezus going off to another school where she would get to take a cooking class and where she could not come to the rescue if her little sister got into trouble. As Ramona approached her bus stop, she thought about one of the best parts of the new school. None of her new teachers in her new school would know she was Beatrice's little sister. Teachers always liked Beezus. She was so prompt and neat. 
When both girls had gone to Glenwood School, Ramona often felt as if teachers were thinking, I wonder why Ramona Quimby isn't more like her big sister. When Ramona reached the bus stop, she found Howie Kemp already waiting with his grandmother and Willa Jean, who had come to wave goodbye. When Ramona reached the bus stop, she found Howie Kemp already waiting with his grandmother Willa and Willa Jean, who had come to wave goodbye. Howie looked up from his lunchbox, which he had opened to see what he was going to have for lunch, and said to Ramona, Why, Howie? said his grandmother. Ramona studied her feet. Howie was right. But why shouldn't her new sandals make her feet look big? Her feet had grown since her last pair. She was not offended. Boasted Willa Jean, who was wearing new coveralls and t-shirt and a pair of her mother's old earrings. Willa Jean was convinced she was beautiful because her grandmother said so. Ramona's mother said Mrs. Kemp was right. Ramona's mother said Mrs. Kemp was right. Willa Jean was beautiful when she was clean because she was a healthy child. Willa Jean did not feel she was beautiful like a healthy child. She felt she was beautiful like a grown-up lady on TV. Ramona tried to act kindly toward little Willa Jean. After all, her family was depending on her. Willa Jean said, she said, oh, Willa Jean gave Ramona a cross, stubborn look that Ramona knew too well. She said, Bless, oh, bless her little heart, said her grandmother, admiring as always. The bus, the little yellow school bus Ramona had waited all summer to ride, pulled up at the curb. Ramona and Howie climbed aboard as if they were used to getting on buses by themselves. I did it just like a grown-up, thought Ramona. Said a woman sitting behind the driver. Ramona and Howie took window seats on opposite sides of the bus, which had a reassuring new smell. Ramona always dreaded the people and fume smell of the big city buses. Called Mrs. Kemp and Willa Jean, waving as if Ramona and Howie were going on a long, long journey. Howie pretended not to know them. As soon as the bus pulled away from the curb, Ramona felt someone kick the back of her seat. She turned and faced a sturdy boy wearing a baseball cap with the visor turned up and a white t-shirt with a long word printed across the front. She studied the word to see if she could find short words in it, as she had learned to do in second grade. Earth quakes earthquakes some kind of team yes he looked like the sort of boy whose father would take him to ball games he did not have a lunch box which meant he was going to buy his lunch in the cafeteria a grown-up would not call him a purple cootie ramona faced front without speaking this boy was not going to spoil her first day in the third grade thump 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 against the back of ramona's seat the bus stopped for other children, some excited and some anxious. Still the kicking continued. Ramona ignored it as the bus passed her former school. Good old Glenwood, thought Ramona, as if she had gone there a long, long time ago. Said the bus aide to the kicking boy. Ramona smiled to herself as she heard Danny mutter an answer. How funny! The bus aide said, saying she was riding shotgun as if she were guarding a shipment of gold on a stagecoach, instead of making children behave on a little yellow school bus. Ramona pretended she was riding a stagecoach, pursued by robbers, until she discovered her eraser, her beautiful pink eraser, was missing. She asked a second grade girl who had taken the seat beside her. The two searched the seat in the floor. No eraser. Ramona felt a tap on her shoulder and turned. Asked the boy in the baseball cap. 
Ramona was ready to forgive 